Hello and welcome back. This is Trump from Homegrown Audio and we're going to be talking about kick and bass processing and phase issues that can arise from your kick and bass synthesis and processing. So without further ado, let's get started. We have the same kick and bass here we had with the same percussions that we made already. Seems to be in phase. Let's fine tune this kick and bass to get it as perfect as possible. This is totally in phase, as you can see here. You see this green line and this white line. The white is the kick, the green is the bass. That's completely in phase, and I'll show you what out of phase sounds like. So this is 47, so 180 plus would be blah, blah, five hours later. Okay, 227. So you can see here this little spikes this this means the kick is cancelling, you see how the sign is completely interrupted. If I turn off the bass now, the kick shape shouldn't change too much. You see there, it just it gets cancelled and the kick gets smaller. You don't want that. So let's move the face back. Back to 47. So now let's see another problem that might come from this. And this is from the actual kick synthesis. So you'll see here in this region on the top end of the kick. So when the envelope too, when it has too much amount, then you'll see the overtones stacking up. This is something that you don't want on your kick and you want to avoid it. So just turn down the amount of the envelope. In this way, also the length of the envelope too can make very big problems in the attack of the kick. So you want the envelope to, to be really, really tight. I said from one to five milliseconds, but it can be way smaller than that. You know, it can be like in the fraction of the millisecond. There is also a problem that can arise if you have your envelopes too long. You shouldn't let your kick go through over the eighth, so it doesn't mix with the offbeat of the yeah, with the offbeat rhythm of the bass. So check that your envelopes are in one eighth if you want a very tight kick and bass. These are the only three modulations that your kick needs, and so I'm gonna 
put the screen right here so you can check them out and really, really don't miss anything. Let's get to the processing part. Here we have the kick drum and I've done this little EQ. I don't like this knocking on my kick, like I, I tend to remove it. It's not bad, it's just a little bit too present for me. I don't like the kick going doo, doo. apart from that that I think that kick is pretty okay I might do a little bit more EQing afterwards but I need more reference like percussions let's go to the bass processing because this is where it gets more tricky this is not much processing on the bass just just an EQ with a high pass filter because you see all this low-end information, I don't want all that. You can't really hear it, but it's there. So I do a little low cut, and it's also to prove a point. It's a linear phase EQ, and it will also do some... It will extend the notes that you're playing because of something called ringing. The artifacts that EQ does. So let's just say we want to get some distortion, and you... If you don't use Cubase, you can use Saturn. This is a very, very good saturator, and you can use the same principles that I'm using, but I'm gonna use Quadrafoss for now. So this is the initial preset. Let's just hear how it sounds and look at the problems. You see how it's affecting the face of your bass very much, especially when you go to lower frequencies. It gets a little bit ridiculous. I also like to bypass the first band because of the same facing problem. It doesn't particularly sound bad, but I don't want to treat the low end with this because I want a really clean low end and the envelopes to be tight. So here in the EQ, we can see in the spectrum that it has some, it has some weird resonances take it down with an EQ in the end we might do that but I'll try and do it with with the serum table edit This is another processor that I really like to use on the bass. This will add a little bit of click and the sky is the limit with this. The lowest crossover on vitamin, I like to keep it over the first or second harmonics. Let's tweak a little bit these processors until we get something nice.
if you want to do it on EQ, it's fine. No one's going to frown and probably you won't even notice the difference. But I'm going to do it in Serum just to see how it's how it can be a little bit fiddly, but also very, very accurate. Now let's pinpoint these frequencies and try to take them down. So let's check the timing on this. And we're going to see here on the LFO tool, you can see here in the beginning of the quarter, the end of the bass is kind of sneaking. That's the ringing of the EQ. So you want to keep your bass away from the, the start of the kick in order to get the maximum volume without clipping the limiters when you're mastering. This is another problem that happens when you use multiband processes. In general, the face kind of goes weird. These little tighter lines we have here is because of all the processing, especially multiband. So all this facing between kick and bass that is happening here wasn't happening before. We'll have to just adjust the kick face and get it in place. So I'll show you here on Mexoscope. You see these lines on the base. This is a very distinctive marker of where the face is of here and here. This lens should be in the end of the negative phase, not the beginning of the positive phase. So for that, we're going to move the kick forward a little bit. So I mean the face backwards. So it needs to go like 50 degrees back. So like right there, let's check. So one last thing I want to add is after you've synthesized your kick and everything is in place, everything is processed in your bass, you should bounce the kick, bounce the kick in audio, because as Serum is quite, quite a good synth, but it's not perfect. So we want the kick to be really tight. And so let's cut the kick into an eighth because that's the length of our kick. And you think it is tight, but zoom in right in and you'll see it's not quite, not quite in place. It's important you get the kick on zero crossing so it doesn't click. 
<laughs> and just get it in the beginning of the of the actual sound. You'll hear when you're chopping too much and just take it back a little bit. In the end, let's just copy this through into a loop and we have a kick that is stable and totally in phase. Before I go anywhere else, I'll introduce you to our new friend here on the screen. And this is courtesy of our friend Richie from Boom Shanka Machines. He's a genius in his art. This oscilloscope is extraordinary. It's like, it's really the best I have ever tried. It has sizes, it has color schemes, it's, uh, it's bonkers. You will love it. By the way, this oscilloscope is free, so you should go and get it. I left a direct link in the description as well. This is in tribute to good old Finbar Ocular. So it is free, but if you want to donate to a charity of your liking, Richie, the developer's suggestion for diabetes charity, because that's, that's what took Finbar. So go check out their website and their channel. They always have new cool toys to, for us to fiddle with. Anyways, that's all for today. If you like the show and find this helpful and useful, like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing a few more features for you guys and for, for, for the people that want to take this into the next level. So stay tuned for more weekly content and see you next time. Mm -hmm.